All right. Each of Junior Collection has just rebounded, you know? It's just, it rebounded from the life of once we all know that was bad horror and good. It was a roller coaster at first. And, okay, we get it. Horror anime shows are not, we get it. Horror anime shows are not that bright. I mean, we got some good ones. There were, I mean, if we look back in the past, of every good horror show, we had some good ones. We had Corpse Party. We had Higarashi, you know, When They Cry. We had Elfin Life. Matter of fact, we even had, like, good ones that was, like, High School, The Dead, and School Life. Which, by the way, both of these were good horror shows. But when you look at Ito Junior Collection, it's, it's trying to bring back the, the, the ways of horror. And in Episode 9, it kind of did. Because we had two stories. And, like, now, you know how normally we have one story that's, like, 10 minutes and this one 13 minutes? To be honest, this story's... Episode 9 had two stories. They were so good that it didn't even have, like, a 10-minute story. This was legit full story of it. And one story was just your... T oh, my God. The first story. I can't even... I freaked out. Not freaked out. More like... Like, you don't understand. This episode will literally not jump scare you, but it was like that kind of reaction I felt. So the episode nine kicked things off with the it starts it means painter. Now I get it. Do you guys ever get this feeling when you guys go to a museum or a art studio or any type of place that has paintings and you guys really pay attention to the walls, the the eyes follow you. That's kind of a true like I swear, if you go to, if you go see the Mona Lisa painting, and you walk by it multiple times, the eyes follow you, and I don't know, but it's kind of a thing, and they do follow you. In this case, kind of does. So we kick things up with this painter, you know, he's a world-renowned painter, just painting stuff, and he sees this gorgeous girl with long black hair, and she has that evil laugh that goes, oh, 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 that kind of... It's that laugh that I freaked out. I laughed so hard. It's like Katarina from Katarina from Street Fighter Five. You know that girl, that rich girl, like laughable rich laugh thing. I don't know why, but she has that. So, it's ironically how she able to find where he lives and who who he paints with. Creepiness, you know what I mean? It's, she's stalking the crap out of it, like some yandere thing. I don't know why, but she found out where he was living. So, he. Literally, so she said some dumb stuff to get her to get that old mother out the way, and her name is Toymi. Now, Toymi, whatever she that name is so repetitive that you're gonna hear that name a lot in this in the first half of this horror story. So he, so at one time he painted this gorgeous art, but then she laughed because it was so fucking ugly. And I'm like, damn, that was a good painting, and she just literally just didn't give a fuck about it. She just literally, literally just like, that thing sucks. But the way how he was so obsessed with this model, he couldn't stop. So he painted a lot. He painted and painted and painted and painted until he finds something good. And he paints something so good, but then he freaking breaks it. And I'm like, that's a lot. I'm like, he worked, he worked for hours painting that for her. But then when it was so bad, he literally breaks it. And he couldn't. He was so obsessed with this girl. And I... I I think it's the black hair or the way how she smiled, but that's how creepy that was. So anyway, his f then that one night he went to this bar, sees this, and his friend gave him a photo of the of the same girl with the sculpture person, the the world renowned sculpture. Who cares about him? But her face freaks me out. It's like Two Face. It's like not Batman Harvey Two Face type, but it's like one of those. How do I say this? Yeah, I forgot what they call it. It's one of those things where you have a Siamese, Siamese twin type thing. Yeah, it's like that. I'm from saying it. Yeah, right. So they got a photo of her normal face, but on the side of her face, it's just freaking creepy, like a parasite. I don't know, but it's so creepy. So he was so obsessed with her. He went to that. He found out. Yeah, he was so obsessed. He went to the sculpture's place, so obsessed to finding her. And he murdered her. He murdered the guy with that, with his sculpture. He took a head sculpture and said, bash, right in the freaking head. I'm like, damn, that's blood right there. He killed him. 
And then when you open the door, you see a bunch of old sculptures, head, arms, all dismembered sculpture body parts on the floor. And you see Tomo just standing right there on the side, just like this. She, she got to applaud her acting. She was just pretending. So when he brought her back and started painting, he didn't paint her. He painted this this weird girl with the face and the blood and the head chopped off. It was so freaking creepy. I'm like, damn them. And then all of a sudden, as soon as she was laughing at how ugly that portrait was, she grabbed that, he grabbed the butcher knife and started chopping her, chopping her, chop her every leg, every arm. It was so fucking good to see blood like that. That's what we want in horror animes. You, you know, in horrorness, you expected blood, we get blood. And that's what we did. So he chopped off like this so hardly. And then all of that, she started to regenerate it. Every body part was returning back to, to, to it was like multiple copies of Toymi. It was like one arm off and you see Toymi regenerating. One leg off, you see one head off. It doesn't matter. It's like, it doesn't matter how many times you chop off her body parts or whatever, the, it regenerates into multiple Toymis. And I don't know, it's so freaking like the half the head, the eyeballs, it's so creepy. I'm like, whoa. Now that's a good story. Kind of like the fashion model, but that was a good story. Now the second half, okay, okay, the second half, I thought this was gonna be Children of the Corn. And if you guys haven't seen Children of the Corn, shame, shame on you. Now th this couple got lost. They're trying to get the road, they're trying to look for the road and the car broke down or whatever. And they see a couple of kids, they see like four kids, you know, just sitting down. And I thought it was gonna be Children of the Corn type thing. But then as they were walking to the village, kind of like Resident Evil 4 a little bit, walking to the village, seeing zombies. Yeah, I feel that. But anyway, as they walking towards the village, these kids got this little poison ivy whip, whipped her and they were vampires. From dust, not from dust till dawn type vampires. They are freaking vampires. Kid vampires. They started like, oh my God. And then, I don't know how, but the whole village was empty, and you ask yourself, where are the villagers? But then it's as obvious there was one guy there who run the entire village. Don't you think that's kind of... It was kind of obvious that he was the one behind this. It was staying the freaking obvious who was actually the person running, who killed everybody in the village. And then, out of nowhere, his backstory said he fell in love with this woman, and this woman was growing plum trees of blood, blood about this size of a plum just literally grows out of her neck it's like a picture of plum but blood so yeah the thing was growing out of her neck and, and the more times it grows the more times she rots the core so and he you think he's a you think he's a simple nice guy with the red eyes and black hair. he looked like a young dracula but apparently he he um he had the entire village buried in the in his room buried in dirt Every villager was in there, and you could, it's like walking to a forest full of blood palm bubbles. Plum blood. Blood, blood plums, or oh, plum blood, well, I call it blood. Blood plums, I'm sorry, that's how you say it. But yeah, you can see that. It was growing out of her, it was so freaking weird. And the old man, one of the villagers trying to tell the, trying to tell the husband, get out, run while you still can, because if you don't, this guy will bury you. He he buried all of us in the village with his sweet charm. And he buried us. And it was the whole background. You see none but villagers just with their necks and their heads growing these giant plum trees that full of blood. It was really weird. So as the couple was leaving, the wife had been had it. She had it on her neck the entire time. It's like spores. Picture spores coming out from the window. Like you see, a, if you have a mushroom spore there and it grows and grows until it spreads the entire place, that's how it was. So the so the wife had this on her neck and the husband, they were leaving and the husband got it on his hand. And then, but the, he had, he remember one of the villagers said, okay, if you want to be the only way to get out of this, you have to drink the plum out of your hand that was growing. If you, if you do, Sooner or later, you become a bloodthirsty. You become a person thirsty for blood. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword. It's like there is no win-win situation to this. This is more like a lose-lose situation. So 
He was not, he wasn't going to, but the wife, the moment she pulled one of these out of her neck, she started drinking the blood out of the nose. And I'm like, oh my God, she's going to turn. She's going to become a vampire. I'm like, whoa. And that's how you're going to end it like that. That was good. I, I can't even argue with that. That was a good show. I mean, I, okay, I get it. There are some Ito Juni collections. There are some stories that are so good, some are not. But this right here, I give credit where credit is due. At least I got some good, at least I got two stories that were really good. And about three women who just literally obsessed with the murder and stuff. Like you got paint her first half, you got this woman who's so obsessed with her own body that she multiples herself, even if her body's chopped off. You got one, you got one of the um, ladies in the back stories who grown out of it since she was dead and you got this current woman who literally just turned, who was just so obsessed with blood right now so I'm like wow this is really good so I can't argue with that episode 9 just really want to bounce back of the hardness and it actually did so I can't argue that but let's hope with episode 10 next week let's hope we get something good and very delicious I don't I feel like I want to get a plum, but if I'm scared right now, if I get a plum now, I think that blood's going to come out of it. I can't argue with that. I can't. But tune in next week for, for the next, yeah, tune in next week for Eat to Juni Collection.